The State of Crypto is presented by Tron, connecting the world to the power of cryptocurrency. The European Union's landmark new legislation, the Markets and Crypto Assets Regulation, known as MICA for short, has been delayed due to technical reasons pushing the final vote till April. Joining us now to discuss is TRM Labs Senior Policy Advisor, Isabella Chase. She joins me now. Isabella, thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. So, Isabella, you focus on uh, UK and EU policy regulatory affairs. What are your thoughts on the delay in the MICA bill? Yeah, no, um, it's really interesting, breaking news just coming out. Um, what I would say is for a document that is as complex as Mika, as substantial, <laughs> um, it is to be expected that we might see some delays at this final stage. Um, from what we're hearing, it's a mix of uh, technical reasons. Again, this is an over 300-page document that needs to be translated into every member state language. That's going to take some time. Um, and then also that the, uh, the policy agenda at the European Parliament, given current macro themes, the war in Ukraine, the energy crisis, is uh, it's pretty chock-a-block. Um, and so Mika is having to slip a little bit until April. Um, Will this have a meaningful long-term impact? Probably not. Uh, it would then have taken a couple of months to enter into the official journal and then uh, been a 12 or 18 month period before it entered into force. So a couple of months now shouldn't make too much of a difference. Okay. What's the stance on TRM Labs in relation to MICA? What are your thoughts on the bill and how it will impact the crypto industry? Well, I mean, um, it is a very significant piece of legislation. I think it's the first in the world to provide a really clear and holistic uh, regulatory framework um, for a digital assets market. We know that Europe is an incredibly important market um, in, in crypto assets. So uh, having that level of clarity is going to be really useful for the industry. Um, there's a lot of work to do on it. This year we'll see uh, ESMA, the European Standards and Markets Authority and uh, the European Banking Authority work on a lot of the technical standards. So it's a bit too early to say um, exactly how it's going to impact the industry, but it certainly provides the clarity uh, mm -hmm. that firms and market participants need uh, to, when deciding to establish within the European Union. So Moving on, but despite crypto winter, the mm. contagion effects haven't really impacted the rest of legacy finance. Um, but I wonder, as more institutional players start adopting crypto, blockchain technology, etc., how can they manage risk in the digital wild west? I understand that you guys handle crypto compliance as well as risk management technology, and one of your clients being JP Morgan. Yes, um, but there's a number of different risks in this space. I think um, one of the areas in which we have the most developed thinking is in the financial crime risk space. Okay. And we've had a, uh, an international regulatory framework for um, anti-financial crime for some time coming from the Financial Action Task Force. At TRM, we offer a suite of different products that allow institution, um, traditional institutions, but also crypto businesses and, and public sector agencies uh, to really manage those risks coming from things like money laundering, terrorist financing, sanctions evasion, um, which you know we've seen have been a vulnerability in the space. Last year alone, we saw uh, North Korea, for example, mm. um, exploiting bridges to uh, see, well, take what ended up being over $3 billion worth of uh, money, which is then laundered uh, through various different techniques, perhaps through mm -hmm. a mixer. And it's all technology that allows firms to ensure that if they're interacting with a wallet or receiving funds, that those haven't been tainted in some way by either illicit or high-risk activity. So I was going to ask you about that because we are, over the weekend we saw funds moving mm. from the a $100 million hack by that North Korean hacker group Lazarus. Lazarus, yes. Uh, from the Harmony Bridge attack mm. that happened last year. And so when you're a, a firm or a crypto firm trying to combat a nation state, I mean, how do you advise them? What, what do you even, how do you help them with that? Sure. I, I mean, and I think it's really important to remember just how sophisticated the Lazarus group is. They're incredibly proficient at uh, moving money and taking money in the first place. Um, so you are up against quite a sophisticated actor there. Um, we have very advanced tracing tools that uh, allow us to monitor funds as uh, they move 
across single chains, but crucially, and um, something we see a lot with North Korean uh, crypto money laundering techniques across different blockchains as well. And we have a very advanced uh, block cross-blockchain um, analytics uh, tool that allows us to watch um, illicit actors if maybe if they move from Bitcoin to, say, Solana, for example. Is there any hope of recovering those funds? There's always hope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, um, it, from what I understand, they're being filtered into various uh, privacy coin mixers, et cetera. Sure. Um, what we tend to see, though, um, you know, there's lots of different ways you can use parts of the crypto ecosystem to move money. But if you want to actualize it, if you want to bring it back into fiat to make it spendable, uh, you will probably at some point have to move it through a centralized exchange. And that's where we work with those firms to make it as difficult as possible for those uh, illicit actors, actors to exit their funds. So that's ensuring um, that we know really exactly who we're dealing with through advanced attribution techniques. Um, to be able to really flag when something doesn't look right, allow uh, the exchanges to freeze the funds, and then rapidly inform law enforcement um, that something might be a problem. And in fact, just last year, we announced a new product um, or tool called TRM Beacon that does just that. So the sec it's a public-private information sharing tool. So the second that funds are linked to something like the Harmony Bridge hack are on the move, we ensure that all the right people who might be affected by that are notified so that we can try and stop funds um, whilst they're on the move. I wonder with the collapse of FTX, it was revealed that there were a lot of problems with the compliance and um, AML basic uh, standards. Uh, what, what could you have done in that case? And they also mm. suffered a $500 million hack. We didn't, we're not sure yeah. uh, who the perpetrators behind that. but No, and I think a lot of people are keeping a very close eye on the wallets associated with mm -hmm. the... Um, I don't think we're, all just, we're not calling it a hack, we're calling Exploit. it an unauthorized Un yeah. <laughs> wallet access point. Um, I think you know, the FTX was not a failure of AML controls, it was a failure of internal governance. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think you know, we at TRM can give you excellent insight onto exactly what's happening on chain. Very little we can do about um, activity that's happening off chain privately um, in real world governance and, and human nature. So I think that's what we really saw a failing of there.